Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject, and that, of course, is math. So in this example, we're going to go through another trip planning app. In this screen, we've got a list of trips, and you can click on them and get to this detailed screen where you can see all the information about the trips and what activities are a part of it. And before we dive into the interface, let's take a look at how we've got the database set up. You can see here we've got our users collection and then two others, one for trips, and trips have a name and then a travel party. So this is related to multiple users that are part of the trip. And then we've got a link to all of the activities that are part of the trip as well. So if we take a look at the activities collection, you can see they have a name. They've got a true-false field for whether or not they're deleted, because we want users to be able to mark them as deleted without actually removing them from the database in case they want to get them back. And then we've got a number field here, which is going to be the trip's price. And then, of course, link back to, or I'm sorry, the activity's price. And then, of course, a link back to which trip the activity belongs to. Okay, so that's our database set up. Now let's dive into the interface and get into the math. So first of all, on our home screen, we've got this list of trips. And as uh, you saw when we were looking at the database, trips can have different activities. And so what I'd really like to have in the subtitle here is to show the number of activities that each trip in the list has. So let me remove this placeholder text. And now I can click the magic text icon. And you can see here under current trip, I can show things like name and the date it was created or updated. But then there's also the activities that are part of the current trip. And right away, there's an option for me to show the count. And so if I click that, it's now showing the activity count here for each trip in the list. What you may not know, though, is for any chip that's a count or any kind of number field, you can actually click on the chip and you get all kinds of options. So you can see in this new menu, that I can set the number format. So if I want it to have commas or not have commas or be abbreviated or if it was a currency, I can show any of that. So what I'm going to go with here is the default. And then the other really interesting thing here is that I can add either prefixes or suffixes depending on whether the number is plural or singular. So in this case, I have a trip to Hawaii that has three activities, but a trip to Alaska that just has one activity. And so I can have a good suffix here depending on whether or not it's plural or singular. So if it's singular, I just want it to say activity as the suffix after the number. And if it's plural, I want it to say activities. So there you go. Now I've got that suffix set up. Now you also see here when I click on this, in addition to prefixes and suffixes and formats, I can also filter this. So if I don't want this count to include all of the activities that are related to the current trip, I don't have to. For example, I can set it so that if deleted is true, then it can show up. But of course, I want it to show up if deleted is false. So now only the activities that are not deleted are being counted, and the ones that are deleted are being excluded. Great. So this is our first uh, encounter with math here. We've got this nice aggregation. We're doing a count of all of the related activities for a trip. Now let's go a little bit deeper, and let's take a look at what we have set up here on the trip details page. You can see I've got the list of activities, but up at the top I've got a number of stats that I'm wanting to show about the trip. So if we look at this, you can see I want to show the total activity cost, the average activity cost, the number of travel party members, the cost per person, the place for a user to enter in a tip amount, and then to figure out what the total would be with that tip. Okay, that's a lot of math, so let's dive in and get started. Let's start with this total activity cost. So here we can remove the placeholder text, click on the magic text button, and now we can select current trip, and then I can go into activities, and then if I hover over the price property, you can see I get all of these great aggregation options for sum, average, minimum, maximum, or min max. And in this case, since I want the total cost, I'm going to choose the sum. This will be available anywhere you've got a number field that you're aggregating with multiple records like we are for all the activities for a trip. So I'm going to do the sum of the price. And again, because this is going to be a number, I can click on this chip to customize its format. And so I can filter out the uh, uh, deleted uh, trips, make sure we're not counting any of those activities. And here I want to set the format to be currency. Okay, great. 
Now let's look at the average activity cost. That works almost exactly the same way. Again, I can click magic text, choose current trip, go down to the activities, then go to the price, and then pick average. And it's just that easy. Again, I can click on this to do a little formatting or filtering, and I'm all set. Now let's look at the number of travel party members. So here, again, we can go to magic text, do current trip, then I can go down to travel party, and then simply do count. And here again is another great use case for singular and plural suffixes. So if it's just one person, I want it to say person. And if it's multiple people, I'm going to have it say people. Great. Now let's look at the cost per person. Here's where things start to get a little more complicated still. So again, we can remove this placeholder text, click on the magic text icon, and here, instead of just going with one of the pre-made functions, we're actually going to go down to this very bottom option, which is always there in your magic text, which is new formula. So now that we've clicked this, it adds a custom formula chip to my input. And if I click on that, I get the menu where I can start to design my custom formula. So here I've got a number input box, and I can type in any numbers that I want. I can also use the keyboard to type any operators like plus or divided by or minus. All of that will work. Um, but I can also use this magic number icon here to add in variables to my formula. So if we want cost per person, then what we need to do is click on this and do current trip activities price sum. And then we can uh, do divided by by clicking that key on the keyboard. And then we want to do current trip travel party count. And we can even, on these variables here, uh, click on them to add a filter. So we're not looking at all of the activities, just the ones were deleted is set to false. OK, great. So now we've got this custom formula that's calculating the cost per person. And again, the way we did that was we took the current trip activity as price sum, and then we divided that by the current trip travel party count. OK, now we've just got one more number that we wanted to show here, which is the total with tip. So with that, we're going to remove the placeholder text. And again, we're going to use a new formula. And we'll click on this custom formula chip to set it up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do the current trip activities price uh, sum. So we have the total price. But then we need to do it with tip. So to do that, we're going to click the plus button on the keyboard. And we're going to add another variable with the magic number button. And here, we're going to go down and choose form inputs. And this is going to show you any of the inputs that you've got on the current screen, which you can see is the tip input. So if I select that, now this custom formula is going to add the sum of the price of all the trips activities, plus whatever the user puts into the tip input. OK, great. Now let's run our app and see these numbers in action. OK, first of all, you can see here on the home screen on my list of trips, we've got two trips, Hawaii and Alaska. And you can see that Hawaii has three activities and Alaska has one activity. You can see the counts at work here, as well as our singular and plural suffixes. Now, if we click into Hawaii, let's look at all of our numbers. So we've got here, we've got the total activity cost, we've got the average activity cost, the number of travel party, our cost per person, but you can see there's a problem here. We totally forgot to show or to set the formatting for the cost per person to be in currency. So all I have to do is go back here, click on cost per person, click on the custom formula, change its number format to currency, and we're all set. Now let's double check that the tip amount is set to that as well. And we'll go ahead and set that to be currency for the total with tip. Now, if we refresh our page, you can see here that the cost per person is now set to be 1767. Uh, and now let's test out the tip amount. So if we add $5 to our tip, you can see that the total with tip is now set to be $58, which is $5 more than the original total activity cost. So there you go. There are common ways to use all sorts of interesting math with a dollar.